get up. There's only three people on right now. There is. It looks like it's just us and Muhammad. So hopefully we'll get some people come into the live stream. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. We are live and in color. Recording. Alrighty, it's two o'clock. So I'll let him in. We can get going. Hopefully we've got some some viewers. In our live stream. Alrighty. Well it's two o'clock, so let's get started. Um, yeah, thank you for for joining us uh, on this webinar, if you're on the Zoom call now or if you are watching from YouTube or Facebook. Um, so my name is Sam Thompson. I am a uh, local mortgage agent um, and we're going to be chatting to you today. We're also joined with, with Mary Ralston, Hi, who everyone. is a, um, a real estate agent um, in um, Waterloo. So yeah, we're going to kick it off with just chatting about, um, I'll start chatting about the mortgage process, then Mary's going to take over and take us through um, the home buying process, the real estate ins and outs, um, and then at 3 p.m. we're going to open it to questions and answer period. So um, if you have a question, feel free to just write it in the chat box, um, or if you're watching it on, on Facebook or YouTube, um, throw a comment on the video and then when we open it up to question and answer, we can look at what those questions are and um, try and get those answered for you. Um, alrighty, so I can share my screen and we can get started here. Alrighty. So as I was saying, welcome guys to the first time home buyers webinar. So I'll be covering the mortgage process um, getting a mortgage, a lot of the mortgage mistakes that we see people make, um, some ways to beat the stress test, um, how to get some money back when you're buying through grants, incentives, rebates, that kind of stuff. Um, we'll chat a little bit about different ways to find a down payment or increase your down payment. And then I'll cap off with the first time buyer incentive before I pass it over to Mary. So just a bit about myself, as I was saying, um, I'm a mortgage agent. Um, I work for Verico Mega Mortgages, and I work with Joe Bladek, who is probably the, you know, the Facebook page you're watching this on, or um, you know, through him you got signed up here. Um, so we're fully licensed with all banks and lenders, um, and really my role in the office is to um, work primarily with first-time home buyers. You know, getting them qualified, getting them approved, and then um, getting them shopping for for their first home. So I'm going to start off just with covering um, a quick case study. So just pay attention to some of the facts and figures. If it looks like your scenario, um, yeah, really just keep those in mind. So this was Jennifer and Joseph. Um, so they came to one of our seminars um, maybe a year or so ago. Um, they only had 1400 in their bank. They didn't know what their credit score and they made approximately $65,000 as a household income. So what happened? So just a couple months after um, attending our, our seminar, we were doing them in person then, um, they moved into their home uh, with um, monthly or sorry, biweekly mortgage payments of 499. So this is really just to um, give a testimonial that regardless of where you are in the mortgage um, or sorry, yeah, the mortgage application process, if you know what your credit score is, you have tons of savings, you're very educated or, you know, you don't maybe know a couple things, um, wherever you are in the process, we can really work with you and get you into your home as soon as possible. So where do you start? The best thing that we can say um, or suggest that you start with is to get pre-approved. So um, yeah, so why would you get pre-approved? So it avoids disappointment, speeds up the process and could save you thousands of dollars. So what the pre-approval does is it gives you, um, we submit that application to the lender and then they respond whether it's approved or not. And that actually gives you an accurate number of, um, of how much house that you can actually afford. So in terms of avoiding disappointment and speeding the process, I could not think of uh, you know, something that would be worse than chatting with Mary, going to look at amazing homes 
and then realize that they're $60,000 outside of your price range that you can qualify for. Um, so you really get to know what to expect, um, where you're at in, in a mortgage sense. Um, and Mary can testify to this better, but it does present a stronger offer and the seller will take you more seriously. So having that pre-approval certificate, you know, it communicates to the lender, uh, sorry, to the seller that you've done your homework, you've partnered with a lender, you're working with a mortgage professional. Um, and one of the best things is, is that it guarantees your interest rate for 90 to 120 days. Here are just some of the banks that um, we work with in the office. Some of them you, you know, may be very familiar with. They may be your home bank. Some of them you may not know. Um, this is just to um, show that we have a really varied and wide range of products and mortgages that we can get you funded with. Um, so if you would like to stay with your home bank, we can do that as well. Or if you're looking to you know, get sort of the best deal and a really good fit for you, we can take you with um, any of these lenders. So how do pre-approvals usually start? So typically we'll see them, they start with a text. Um, after this webinar, you'll get an email with a link to book a um, appointment with our office. Um, so we're really not um, that affected by the COVID scenario. Most of these happen completely virtually anyways. So we can do it um, over the phone, via text, via email, FaceTime, um, not really Skype. I mean, we can, but more people are, are drifting towards Zoom lately. Um, but any, any way that we can connect with you virtually um, is fully um, how most of them are all done. And all that you'll need to get uh, pre-approved is gonna be a pay stub as well as photo ID. Um, and then as we you know, continue in the process and we start to need some documents, you can send those in via email or fax them to us. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, basically the entire process of getting pre-approved happens completely screen to screen, either from a phone appointment and then just emails or some of us even, yeah, um, just do it completely through text. So why would Canadians use brokers? So they really wanna find mortgages that fit um, as you can see in the pictures here, um, so you can't tell very well, but I'm a relatively tall person. Joe is definitely a very tall person, and we find it very challenging um, to be able to purchase a, a shirt that fits properly. Sometimes it, you know, fits good on the shoulders, but then you're, you're swimming in it, or sometimes it, um, you know, fits kind of around the waist, but it's, it's way too short and you're, you're stuck with a crop top like the guy on the right. So we really love this analogy of, we really find a mortgage that fits your scenario. We don't, um, you know, we don't like to see you compromising in areas just to get a mortgage. So we give you access to more products. Um, you guys already saw the, the number of banks that we work with. Um, we have a really wide range of what we can offer you in terms of a mortgage. Uh, and protecting your credit score is another big one. So we only do one credit check and that's valid across all of the banks and lenders that we use. So um, we can really kind of pair what your application looks like with all of the different lenders to suit your scenario best and get you the best rate. Buyers have a unique story. Um, this is a big one because what we're able to do is actually um, communicate in, in lender notes as we submit um, we can sort of advocate for, you know, what your story is going into this. As a, as a quick testimonial, um, back in about February before all the COVID stuff, um, we actually had a client come to us who had some poor credit from a few years back. And what we were able to do is communicate in the lender notes on his application that he was only seasonal and wasn't guaranteed full-time hours at that time. But since then, he had gained um, permanent full-time status and we actually saw that, I think the next day, um, he got fully pre-approved. And of course, using a broker is completely free. So we don't get paid until you get into your house. Um, and we actually get paid by the bank or lender that we put you with. So during no point in the process, do you pay um, a broker or a mortgage agent anything um, during the entire process. As I was saying, there's lots of mortgages that are available. So this is just a quick list if you're looking for a um, improvement mortgage, a flip mortgage, um, portable, short-term, new build, you name it. Um, we really get to look at what your file looks like, what your needs are, and find you a mortgage that's gonna fit you best. And this is a really fun study that was done, um, I think it was done last year, a couple of years ago, 
Um, and the, the findings of this research uh, showed that brokers on average um, versus a institutional lender will save their clients on average a $42 um, per month. So we've done sort of the math on this and that works out to about um, a small Timmy's coffee every weekday of the month. It says day of the month, but Timmy's has raised their price. But so if you, if you like coffees, you want to save on your mortgage, this is a great um, example to, to work with us. And Joe and I will personally buy you a small Timmy's coffee every day of the week. So now that we've established um, some of the differences between you know, mortgage bankers uh, versus brokers, we're going to quickly look at um, some of the mistakes that we see people um, come into the office with. A lot of them they don't know they're making, um, just to give you an idea of, of what to expect. So ignore your credit score is going to be the, the number one mistake. Um, so you don't want to get stuck with a bad rate because you have poor credit. Um, it's really good to you know, keep a pulse on, on where you're at in terms of your credit so that if you need to pay some debts off, if you need to make some changes um, to start building that credit, you can start right away. It's really easy to check what your score is through you know, Equifax. Um, there's also sites like Credit Karma. Um, a lot of your mobile banking apps as well have an option to check what your credit score is. And again, that tip is actually really important. So don't apply for new credit before you get the mortgage. Even after you know, you've, you've submitted the, um, the application, until you're in the home, don't apply for any new credit. If you have gone through a bankruptcy or consumer proposal, um, we really want you to know about and follow the 222 rule. So um, what this is, is the banks are not gonna lend you a mortgage until you have at least two credit cards for two years minimum with a $2,000 limit on both of them. So if you have, um, you know, if this scenario rings true for you uh, and you have been discharged and haven't done it, it's gonna be your first step moving forward. This is just a really quick breakdown of, um, you know, what goes into, um, yeah, sort of the different range that you can have for a credit score. So typically what we see is that most lenders, anything over um, 630 is pretty good credit score. If you are in the 700s, you know, 690 plus, uh, it's actually gonna present a really strong credit score. Anything below 630, so around the 600 mark or less, um, they are gonna consider that relatively poor. So um, if that's your case, then we'll have to do a bit of work with you to start building that credit. And just a quick breakdown into what goes into a credit score. Um, you're gonna see on the chart here, the biggest one is credit history. So that's just the length that you've had those credit accounts. Um, so a lot of the times if you have a old um, you know, credit card or, or line of credit that you've had since high school or college, um, if you keep that, they, um, it's actually gonna help your credit score because the length of that credit account. As soon as you close it to open a new one, you lose all of the credit history that was attached to that one account. And you're gonna see the second, um, second highest you know, uh, factor in calculating the score is going to be what your debt owed is. So how we like to illustrate this is if you have a $900 balance on a $1,000 credit card, it's going to reflect much worse than having a $900 balance on a $10,000 credit card. Um, you may be thinking that the balance is still 900, what does it matter? They're actually going to look at the first example of 900 on a $1,000 credit card and um, see that you've used up 90% of your, you know, maximum credit limit. So it's always good to, um, you know, stick below 50% of that used anywhere around 30 um, is going to be a, a, a comfortable rate that won't affect it too much. And anytime if your um, bank, you know, they email you or call you offering a credit increase, um, definitely take that credit limit increase and thank them for, you know, helping boost your credit score a bit. Mistake number two is not reviewing your options. So there are tons of different rates, lenders, ways to pay and penalty calculations. Um, so we don't want to see you, you know, come in one track minded and get stuck on um, thinking that this one way is the greatest way to go and end up um, compromising in a lot of areas. So as an example for um, difference in rates, we're gonna look at 2.84 versus 2.99. So definitely the first thing you'll notice is that, wow, these are high rates. Um, this is a, a older slide because we're not really seeing anything near 2.84, um, but is there a difference? 0.15%, whoops, there is a massive difference. 
So uh, over the lifetime of your mortgage, that could save you up to $10,000. Um, so getting a, a competitive rate is going to be one of your best steps to saving you money over the lifetime of your mortgage. Different banks. So again, um, you saw the slide with all of the lenders and banks that we work with. What we can do is run your specific scenario by each of the banks to get the most savings that we can. Um, we don't want you necessarily to just stick with your bank because that's what mom and dad did. That's what people are telling you you should do. If, if we can find you a better deal with a different bank, then um, it's only going to be saving you money over the lifetime of your mortgage on this really big investment. Um, in terms of payment options, is there a better option for monthly versus biweekly? A lot of people think that they you know, work out to be about the same, but they're actually quite a bit different. So in this ch uh, chart here, you'll see the blue line is going to be the traditional monthly uh, mortgage payments, and the yellow chart is going to be what the biweekly payments are. So just by increasing the frequency to 26 payments a year, you actually save a ton on the interest that you would typically pay just doing it monthly and it actually can speed up the process of repaying your mortgage. Penalty calculations have, have become a massive, um, a, a massive consideration when getting your mortgage that a lot of people actually don't really think about. So I know that we definitely heard about it in the office. I think, you know, it's kind of gone around a bit. Um, there was a gentleman who was with TD and he broke his mortgage and was stuck with a $20,000 uh, penalty fee. We do not want to see you get stuck with a penalty at that rate. Um, we know that life happens. Sometimes, you know, the only result is going to be you breaking your mortgage, whether it's uh, through a divorce, through needing to move for work, you know, whatever the scenario is. Um, if that is your only option, we don't want to see you get stuck with penalties that are, you know, upwards around $20,000. So we like to um, keep you with banks or lenders that are going to really limit the, um, the penalty calculation and give you kind of a softer penalty just in case. Mistake number three is borrowing too much. So we don't want you to borrow so much that you can't afford to order in pizza. You can't afford to, um, you know, wash the car, buy a, a new dog bed, whatever it is. Um, we don't want to see you buying or sorry, borrowing so much that you can't actually live in the house that you've just purchased and you're just tied down under this massive, massive debt. And on the topic of borrowing before you buy, um, if you are getting a car loan or plan on getting a car loan, make sure you get your mortgage first. Um, because what we've seen is that, you know, even very low payments of, you know, three, four hundred dollars can impact massively um, what you can qualify for um, in terms of, of your mortgage calculations. So if you haven't borrowed yet, please get your mortgage first. If not, or you need to borrow, um, sorry, or you need to get a, a car loan, um, you know, let us know when we're chatting with you and we can discuss maybe some options um, to, you know, help you still get the most for your um, mortgage amount. Mistake number four is forgetting about closing costs. So we don't want you to forget about these. Um, they sneak up on, on a lot of people. Uh, everyone's always so focused on down payment and monthly mortgage payments, but they forget that there are a lot of costs that go into closing. So when we do these um, seminars in person, we have a lovely laminated booklet that we'll hand out to you. Seeing as this is online and we can't do that, um, we're actually going to be emailing you um, the closing cost worksheet as well as a, a home buying worksheet. So look out for that in your um, email if you signed up for the webinar. Mistake number five is just simply enough not getting pre-approved. Um, the conversation with myself typically takes about, you know, five to 30 minutes, more likely on the 30 minute mark. Um, all we need is your ID and pay stub. It's completely free. It really um, gives you a, a good pulse on sort of where you're at, and it can help you win an offer when you're ready to submit one um, for a house that you find with Mary. And again, it can be done completely over text or email, um, phone appointments. We really um yeah pride ourselves in being able to um, make this these pre-approval uh, pre appointments possible and um yeah just get pre-approved um, and then after that we want you to set up your home buying team so that includes um using a mortgage broker using a real estate buyer's agent um, such as mary if you um you know are already in a position to start looking for a home 
definitely connect with Mary. Um, using a buyer's agent was going to save you lots. Um, and using a buyer's agent, it really, you are the priority to that agent versus relying on a seller's agent who has the seller as their pr um, top priority. It's completely free to use a real estate agent as well as a mortgage broker. Um, so definitely that's going to be the best thing to have in your wheelhouse on your next step forward. We're quickly going to look at a second case study. So this was over in uh, Tavistock, Ontario. So they purchased this um, for $329,000 with $16,000 down and making biweekly mortgage payments of $696. So what ended up happening was after just five years, the market value of this home had increased to $419,000. Um, they had done some refinancing. So the mortgage value left was $339,000, but even still they could sell and take $140,000 in equity to their next home in five years. So this is just um, meant to really give a, a display and a testimony of what investment um, in real estate can look like. No other you know, high interest savings, tax-free savings account is gonna give you the same over that real estate can offer just on your down payment, not even on the full house price. So now I'm going to go through um, some of the grants, rebates and credits, refunds, just ways to get money back. This is definitely my favorite part. It is uh, labeled as the best part. So let's jump into this and ooh, that was fast. Um, and see what we can see. So here, uh, first one you're gonna see is gonna be the first time um, buyers are entitled to a refund of approximately $1,000 if you buy an energy efficient home. Um, so I believe that this is also offered if you are purchasing a home and increasing um, the energy efficiency by about 5%. So for an example, on a $425,000 home, that refund works out to be about $1,100. If you're um, a first time home buyer again, um, Ontario offers a land transfer tax rebate. So that approximately works out to be about $4,000 if you're buying in Toronto, because there is a second fee, they will add an additional $3,700 to that. So if you are a first time buyer buying in Toronto, that total rebate works out to be about $7,700 back to you. New to Canada benefit. Um, so this is a really cool initiative for any newcomers to Canada who are permanent residents within the last five years. So what they've done is they've reduced the employment requirements just down to three months and there's no actual credit score required in your um, application. They will just need to get some bank statements from you, insurance statements, phone bills to sort of check um, where your credit is at. But it's really a great incentive to take advantage of if you're new to Canada and you're finding it difficult to, you know, make that first step um, in getting over some of the hurdles just to get your first home. HST rebate. So this is for any first time home buyers that are looking at, um, building a new home yourself or purchasing a new home from a builder. Um, so this rebate covers the, um, the HST tax that you will pay on getting a newly built house. So as an example for this, say your new home um, was going to cost $425,000. The HST rebate for that will work out to be around $33,000 back. Tax credit available to first time home buyers. So this is a um, credit that you just fill out on your income tax. There's a certain line on it. You just fill out 5,000 um, and it's available to all, um, all Canadian first time home buyers. So the example we use is if you are earning as a household income $85,000, that could work out to be about $2,100 back into your pocket. Free one year home warranty. So this is a really important one um, if you're a first time home buyer um, because this uh, through some of our lenders, they offer a one year free home warranty, which covers home heating, air conditioning, electrical, water heating and plumbing, all the necessities. And if we know through Murphy's law, if something is going to go wrong for your new home, it'll be within the first year, right after you've paid out a uh, down payment, covered all the closing costs, um, it covers up to $10,000 in repairs and there's no inspection required. So when you're reaching out to us to schedule a pre-approval um, you know, call, just ask us about that and we can get you hooked up with the lenders that will offer that. If you're finding um, it difficult to get your down payment, you can withdraw now from your RRSP completely tax-free. 
Um, so each home buyer can withdraw up to $35,000. And the couple calculation is wrong. It's actually um, up to $70,000 per couple, completely tax free. Um, so it'll save you an additional $21,000 in tax. And you withdraw it in the form of a home buyer's plan, um, which is seen basically as a loan, um, which you would just make repayments on for the life of your mortgage. So for this, it's really easy. You just have to be a first time home buyer um, or someone with a disability or buying a home for someone with a disability. And if you just haven't owned any property in the last four full calendar years, you will also apply for this incentive. So now we've covered incentives. I know that that was really quick. I've sped through them really fast. Um, we're just gonna look at ways to get a down payment or boost your down payment. Um, so here's a list of municipalities that are offering a um, sort of a, a home buyer's plan or a down payment assistance plan. A lot of them have different names, but all of the municipalities on this list here, um, some of them are 5%, some of them are 10% but they will offer a forgivable loan um, to be added to your minimum of 5% down. So what that means is that after the 20 years um, of having this loan, if you're still in, the, um, still in the home after 20 years, it's completely forgivable. You don't have to pay anything back. Um, so it's a great way to reduce your monthly mortgage payments um, just by having you know, an extra 5% added to your down payment. And again, it is available in the Waterloo region. So different ways of getting a down payment um, can be through accessing a line of credit. Um, some rent to own programs are available for you. Um, you can get gifted equity from the seller as well as money from family and cash back mortgages um, can be you know, another way to earn some money back on what you're gonna be spending. So I know that that was a lot of information. I probably went through it super fast. Um, you maybe didn't you know, remember everything that I touched on, but just to look at you know, the savings kind of stacked, assuming that you could apply for all of them, everything I just talked about could be a total savings of $52,000. So we don't expect you to you know, remember every single one that I talked about. Um, the point is, is that we know what they are. We know how to um, find the ones that you're gonna qualify for and help you apply for those during the mortgage process. Um, so a lot of these are fully available and not a lot of people actually know about them, but it's up to $52,000 in savings. So, um, you know, working with us, we'll, we'll walk you through the ones that you qualify for and help you in the application process of them. So I'm just gonna close off here, just chatting what the first time home buyer incentive is. So what this incentive does, similar to the municipal grant, um, it enables first-time homebuyers to reduce what they're paying on their monthly mortgage payments without increasing their down payment. Um, the incentive doesn't bear interest. You don't have to um, you know, pay for it over the life of your mortgage. Um, it would just be a one, uh, like a one-time sort of triggered repayment at the maturity date of your mortgage. Um, and through this incentive, the government of Canada will offer you 5% down um, if it is your first time uh, sorry, if it is a resale home or five to 10% if you're purchasing a new construction home. So just to look at what this um, works out to be on a sort of side to side scenario, um, we're going to look at this chart or this um, sheet here. So on the left is going to be somebody who is applying for a mortgage without the incentive and the uh, column on the right is going to be someone who uses the incentive. So you can see their income is the same. The house price they're purchasing is the exact same. They're both putting 5% down of their own money, but the chart, uh, the column on the right is an additional 5% down. So what that does is it lowers the insured mortgage, it lowers the insurance premium, and the difference that they make in monthly payments is only going to be um, $123 or in yearly costs, they can save up to um, you know $1,400. So that money is completely yours. It can go towards a, a hot tub fund, getting a new car, it can go right into a, a high interest savings account, whatever you wanna do with that money, that is just savings that you will accrue um, through using the first time home buying incentive. So what properties are eligible? So any new construction or resale homes definitely are, um, any single family homes, duplex, triplex, fourplex, townhouse, it's a really long list, but what we like to say is that if Mary can find you the home, more than likely it's going to be eligible um, for this incentive. 
So in order to apply for this, you just have to be a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident. Um, you can apply if you're a non-permanent resident and are legally authorized to work in Canada. Um, they have capped off your maximum household income at $120,000. And the, um, the loan amount cannot exceed four times whatever your household income is. So for an example, if you're, um, you were earning as a household income $100,000, the maximum loan amount could not exceed $400,000 or four times your $100,000 household income. And of course, um, at least one of the home buyers must be a first time home buyer. So as I wrap down to the end of my presentation, um, we just want to be able to offer you guys a chance to win your down payment. Um, so as a thank you, um, we'd love it if you would sign up for um, a quick thank you card. We only need your name and your home address, and we will send you a thank you card as well as a scratch ticket that have prizes up to $10,000. Um, so we would love to hear back that you um, came to this webinar, got super educated by, you know, myself and Mary, you were connected with the right people. And then on top of that, just a few weeks later, you were able to win $10,000 to put towards your down payment. It's super easy. I will re-add the link to the chat. Um, just click it fill it out and then uh, we'd love to see you win your down payment. So thank you so much. Um, if you remember anything from my presentation, it was a lot, I know. Just remember to get pre-approved. You can reach out to us at either of the phone numbers um, on the screen, either by calling or texting them. Um, you can visit us at mortgageweb.ca slash barrymortgagebroker or on our Facebook page at facebook.ca slash bemortgagefree. Um, again, we're going to be sending out an email that will have a link to book an appointment. Please do that. We'd love to um, get in touch with you and start the process of getting you pre-approved. So thank you, guys. That is it for me. Um, again, if you have any questions, um, please write them in the chat or add them to the comments if you're watching on, on YouTube or on Facebook. Um, but that's it for me. So, Mary, if you'd like to take over, the floor is yours. Okay. Let me uh, get this started. That was some pretty good information. Uh, all right. Okay, we're ready. Okay, so I'm going to take you through what it's like to buy a house. And when it's your first time buying a house, it's um, it can be stressful. I'm trying to take that stress away from you as much as possible. So I'm going to explain to you how the process works. Um, so just a little bit about me. Um, I have been in real estate for uh, just shy of 12 years. Um, I, I do different areas. I, I have, I spent quite a bit of time in Barrie. So I have done real estate there. Uh, I'm from the Waterloo area. I grew up in Elora and, and I do real estate there. So I'm with Remax Twin City and uh, hopefully I can help you buy your first home. So just some tips to know before you buy. Uh, some of these things Sam covered in, in what he talked about, but I'll talk a little bit about them too. Uh, so work with a lender for a pre-approval. So like Sam or Joe, they're very qualified to help you. They, help, they actually help me with my mortgage and they're really wonderful. Um, you're going to need a down payment. Um, some people, when they're buying their first home, they think they can buy a home without a down payment. Now there are incentives out there to help you. So those are things that you want to discuss with Sam and Joe when you're getting your pre-approval. Um, it's important to have a home inspection or a pre-inspection. So when you're buying a home, you want to know that the home you're buying is good. So that's the reason for bringing in, oops, sorry, a home inspector. I jumped ahead. And the difference between a home inspection and a pre-inspection is a pre-inspection is something that we do if you're in a market like Waterloo where it's very competitive and the house that you're buying is going to have more than one offer on it. 
So what we can do is bring in a home inspector throughout one of the showings, and then he can go through and uh, bring anything to your attention that you might want to be aware of. And those are things that help us when we're doing an offer. Uh, the other thing you need to keep in mind is set up a purchase budget. So Sam kind of covered that too. And uh, his little checklist is going to be really helpful for you when you're planning on buying a house. So, so you want to have a budget in mind because you don't want to have any surprises on the day when you go to the lawyers and you're signing the papers and you find out you have to come up with some extra money. So, you know, those, those are things that between uh, Sam and Joe and I, we help you with that. Uh, just to be prepared for it. And like Sam said, never deal with the listing agent. A lot of people think that if they go directly to the listing agent, they're going to get a better deal. That's really not the case. They have a contract with the people that they're dealing with and they have their best interests at heart. So it's important to have a separate buying agent so they can look after you properly. Uh, so expenses when you're buying, you know, you have your deposit, you have the home inspection, pre-inspection that runs anywhere from uh, usually three to $450. I did it again. Sorry, that's me. And uh, your legal fees, depending on the lawyer that you use, um, normally they're around and they can be $700 to $1,400. Uh, land transfer tax, when you're a first time home buyer, usually that's done as a rebate and that's based on the purchase price of your house. And so you usually get uh, a credit for that. Okay. So the pre-approval process is the most important part when you're buying a home. It's so important to get a pre-approval done before you go out looking for a house. Because I don't want to be taking you out to a house that you fall in love with that you can't afford. Because um, it's so it's so disheartening when you know you finally find this house that you love and then you find out you can't buy it because it's not in your budget. So that's why we like to send you to a mortgage person first. So Sam and Joe help you with your pre-approval and then they talk to me and they let me know how much you can afford. And then that helps me with my uh, search when I'm looking for homes with you as well. So, so pre-approval is so important. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna give you a little scenario. So. Uh, another agent I know of took a buyer out to, they were buying their first house and uh, the Waterloo market, you're, you're going to be in competing offers no matter what, because it's very, very active. So they put an offer on this house and the house ended up being over what they could afford because they didn't get a pre-approval, they didn't know that. So these poor people, they, they fell in love with this house and then it ended up, they couldn't buy it, couldn't even you know, go up in money to, uh, to get the house. So it was just really, really disappointing. So I don't want you ever to have to go through that. Okay, so uh, once you get your pre-approval, then we can start looking for a house. So this is the exciting part. So what I do for you is I set you up on a search through the websites that I have available to me. So you're probably used to looking on realtor.ca. So everyone can look on realtor.ca. So working with a buyer's agent, uh, we have our own websites that we have access to and we get information before it hits realtor.ca for everyone else to look at. So I can set you up on a search based on your criteria. So what we'll do is we'll get together and we'll talk about things about what you're looking for 
And then within that criteria, I look for, uh, for what your search will be. And throughout the process, um, a lot of people wonder how long does it take to buy a house? Well, I've had people who I've taken out and I've shown them three houses and they choose one. And I've had people who I've taken out and we've looked at 20 houses before they find the one they want. So it really depends on what's out there, what's available and, um, and you know, what you're looking for. So my job is to help you find what you're looking for. So over the process, once we, after we set up a search and we talk, then we're gonna talk regularly until I find a house for you. So we're gonna talk about, you know, the houses that you prefer. We're gonna talk about houses that you don't like. And it's basically a process of elimination. And I'm gonna give you advice on the market conditions to make sure that you're getting the best value for the house that you wanna buy as well. So we're gonna to work together and make sure we find that house for you. So after that, um, oh, we have to go through some uh, rules on COVID-19. So real estate is considered an essential service, which you know we're lucky that we can still show houses. Um, a lot of things are starting to open up now. You know, some people are going back to work, but um, we still have guidelines that we have to follow because of COVID-19. So in the past, you could go and meet to an open house. Now you can't go to open houses, but what we do is we, we have virtual open houses online that you can view a house with. So you can see a video tour, um, you can have a virtual showing, you know, and I can go through uh, showings on Zoom with you, but to go to an open house, can't do that anymore. Uh, we can go in to see houses. Uh, I actually just showed a house before we were doing this seminar, um, but we can't go in and view like 20 houses in a day anymore. So what we do is we, by the virtual showings and the video tours, we're working together. I did it again. Um, we're gonna work together and we're gonna narrow down what you like and what you don't like. And then we're gonna pick two or three houses, go out to see those. And then uh, we're gonna choose from one of those houses. So, that's basically how it works with COVID-19. We have questionnaires that we have to fill out. Um, you know, it's, I'm sure you've heard all the questions. Have you traveled? Well, no one has traveled in the last 12 days. We can't go out of the country. Have you been around anyone who has traveled? Um, do you have signs of COVID? You know, all, all the standard questionnaires, things we have to answer. So we're basically responsible to uh, to make sure that the homeowner and you are safe and healthy. Okay, so once that is all over with, um, so things that I do for you, um, as I said, I'm gonna work with you and make sure I help you find the house that you want. Um, I work with you to prepare your offer. Once we do find that house, make sure that you're protected with the right conditions. Um, if you're gonna be in a competing offer situation, then I give you the best advice possible so you get the house that you want. And I'll provide you with um, competitive information so you, you know that you're not overpaying or underpaying. And uh, I work with Sam and Joe on uh, making sure that they get all the paperwork to get your financing done. And then I work with the lawyers to make sure that the closing is done for you on time with no stress whatsoever. So basically I work with you from start to finish. You know, I work with you. Uh, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that I do that, that you won't know about, but I'm going to help you 
get through everything stress-free. And uh, I stay on top of, you know, all the little detail-y things to make sure that you're getting what you want. So after you've bought your house, so, you know, now we've gone through the search, you know, your financing is done, your closing is done, you move into your house. So I'm not going to go away after that. I'm going to keep in touch with you because, you know, we're going to build up a relationship together and, and I want to keep in touch with you after. And if there's anything that you need for your house, then I'm going to be there for you. So start to finish and after I'm there for you. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it for me. Um, I hope you learned some things here today. Uh, this is my contact information. You can email me. My email is mary.ralston at remax.net. Um, you can call me. My phone number, if you want to write this down, it's probably going to be on the next slide, is 226-218-6574. Uh, you can call me, text me, email me. Um, you can go on my Facebook page. And if you do all those things, you could be a winner too. So like Sam and Joe have uh, something for you, I have something for you as well. So go on my Facebook page, like, share, and comment, email me, and uh, let me know what your contact information is so I know who to send the prize to. And you can even text me. I didn't add that one on there. So when you email me, uh, let me know if you need a pre-approval. And then uh, if you haven't been in touch with Sam and Joe, I'll put you in touch with them. And if you need help finding a home, let me know that too. And I'll get things set up for you between us. And if you want to join my VIP client list, then let me know that too. And I'll set you up with that. So that's it for me. And I hope you learned some things and please ask any questions you have. That was awesome. Thank you, Mary. Um, yeah, like she was saying, please ask some questions. It definitely helps round off the, the process. We can, you know, chat over maybe things we missed or explain something better. So if you have questions um, and you're watching, it'd be really helpful. Um, okay, question here from Mohammed. So how many pay stubs are needed for pre-approval? Um, so we would just need your most recent one um, for any of the applicants that are going on the uh, mortgage application. Um, so say it was um, a spouse, we would need one from the husband's current employer and then one from the wife's current employer. And again, any sort of T4s um, or notice of assessments are also uh, really helpful to, to have on file as well. Good question. Okay, second question. Uh, bank statements are also needed from both, right? And how many months of bank statement? Um, so for the pre-approval process, um, we don't actually need um, your bank statement. Once you have submitted a, um, an offer on a house and we're going through what your, um, like going through, sorry, the, the official approval letter to the lender, um, at that point we would need bank statements, um, you know, to prove where your down payment is coming from and um, and that sort of thing. So to get pre-approved, um, it's just a, um, just your, your um, just your pay stub, sorry, and your T4. Um, and we can work out, you know, what sort of ratios you're looking at. And then once you put in an offer with Mary, then um, you'll need to get some bank statements from again, each of the applicants. Thanks. Yeah, no problem, Mohammed. Thank you for the questions. It makes this time a little less awkward and and really helpful. 
check if we have any from our live stream. Okay. So it doesn't look like we have any questions there either. Um, I guess one thing that I did forget to mention that um, I can chat about a little bit is just the um, the changes that are going to be taking place um, if you are getting an insured mortgage through um, CMHC. So I'm sure most people are familiar with this. Um, uh, starting July 1st, um, CMHC is changing their um, mortgage requirements if you are submitting a mortgage with under 20% down. Um, so what they're doing is they're incre increasing the, um, the credit, um, credit score to 680, I believe from, from 630. Um, and they're also going to be limiting some of the down payment sources, um, that are previously, like if it requires more borrowing, um, they're not going to accept those as, as down payment sources. So that's effective, um, as of July 1st. If you get an offer in, a live offer, um, you know, signed before July 1st, it can be grandfathered over into, um, you know, past July. Um, there also is um, two other mortgage insurers, um, Genworth and um, Canadian Guarantee, I think is what it's called. Um, and they are not following suit with CMHC. Um, so that is also an, an option that's available um, for getting your mortgage insured. Did forget to mention that we generally get a lot of questions about what's happening with CMHC. Um, alrighty. Well, if we don't have any questions, um, again, get in touch with either myself or Mary. Um, you'll receive a follow-up email from us um, to book an appointment or to you know schedule a pre uh, pre approval. Um, appointment, and then we can we can work with with where you're at to get you over to Mary and get start house shopping. So thank you, Mary, for for taking some time um, to join me and chat about the real estate process. No problem. I like Muhammad's clap in the top corner. Me too. Thanks, Zoom. Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, well. I guess we will end it there. So thank you everyone for coming and we hope you have a great week. Yes.